so this week we are working on a bunch of flowery designs. Um, lots of clients like really flowery things, but sometimes people can be quite nervous of doing them um, because they can come across as being really difficult to do, but actually most flowery designs are quite easy to do. Um, so we're going to work through a bunch of them this morning. Um, we're going to start off with some easy ones. The last one we're going to do is the hardest of all of them, but I do have a longer tutorial on the last one that I will also share in the group. Um, I'm just going to paint this guy up for our first one. Right, let's get you painted. And I'm going to get this guy painted for our second one. So it's very early. Right. So I am going to need a little palette. I just have, um, it's just a tip of glitter here that I'm just going to dispense some polish onto. And get him painted while I'm doing this. So our dotting tools are going to come back into this again quite a bit today. Um, dot and tools are very handy when you are doing flower designs. I'm just get him painted up. Chuck him in there. Okay. So I am just putting a blob of a few different colours down on my palette. Let's start off with him. And this orange guy, if I get the ball open. <laughs> I expect pumpkin fun. This guy here is about to get really popular again now coming into the summer. He's absolutely gorgeous. And probably our most popular colour during the summer last year. Okay, so when you were doing flowers and you're doing petals, oh look, got lovely. Big orange stain on the table now. Um, when you were doing flowers and doing petals, you are always best off to try to keep your flowers, um, like your, your petals, to an odd number. So three or five, or if you're going to put loads in, try to stick to seven. Um, just because flowers generally aren't symmetrical, so if you make an even number, then they tend to look a little bit symmetrical and they look really fake. Um, Okay, so I have my few little dots of product here and I have my little nail stick and I'm going to grab a medium sized dotting tool. Now this one is going to be super easy. So I'm going to pick up a little blob of the pink and I'm going to pop a dot down on the nail. Now. If you used to draw stars or anything like that when you were in school, that's kind of the shape that you're going for. So you're going for almost like a triangle and then a dot over here and a dot over here. So let's do our little triangle. So I'm going to do a dot down here. And a dot over here. And then I'm going to put another dot here. And another dot here. So I have five little dots. And let's do that again down here. Try and do that in the centre of the screen. So I'm doing almost a triangle. It doesn't matter if they touch or if they don't touch. Try to not have them too far away from each other. And they don't all have to be exactly the same size either. And I'm going to stick that in the lamp just for a couple of seconds to dry, just so that when I pop another blob of gel polish up against that in a second, the colours don't all run together. And I'm just going to clean that over there. Okay. 
So, got him back out again. Now I want to make this really cute, so I'm going to take purple, so I'm going to go with a second colour. And I'm going to do the same thing again. See the way some of them are touching and some of them aren't? That is ideally what you want. So, triangle. And then I'm going to do a half of one down here that's kind of falling off the nail. And I'm going to stick them in the lamp and cure them again, just for a couple of seconds, just to stop them from smudging on me when I pop in our centerpieces. And they'll do. Okay. Now I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to take a slightly smaller side of the dotting tool. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to pop a little orange dot in the center of each of my flowers. Aren't they cute? And are they easy? No, and I'm going to chuck them in the lamp then for the full 30 seconds to cure completely. Um, and then I'm going to take them out and top coat them and that is him done. Now what I'm doing with this second guy is first of all I'm going to give him another coat of polish because he is see-through and I don't like see-through. Okay, so let's chuck him back in the lamp and we'll cure him. And I'm going to take a blob of the same colour and pop it on my wheel. So this is a similar design, um, just with a slightly more complex look that looks a little bit more flowery. So it's cute. Um, this is our first guy anyway, so all he needs now is to be top coated and he's done. Okay. So for this guy here, I'm going to take my larger dotting tool again. And I'm going to go for this pink because it's nice and strong. And I am going to pick a little bit of him up and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. First of all, I'm going to do my triangle. And I'm going to do another one down here. And I'm going to stick that in the lamp and cure it for five seconds. And right now you're probably like, that looks exactly the same as what we just did. So why is it different? But I'll show you now in a second why it's different. So I'm going to give him a couple of seconds to cure. Okay, now what I'm going to do is using a smaller size of my dotting tool and using the same colour that I painted the nail with, I'm going to pop up, pick up a little dot and I'm going to touch inside the flower. Take that out the screen so it focuses on this. And the inside of the petal. all the way around. So I'm doing a little dot inside the petal leaves but it's touching the center of the flower as well. It just makes the dots look a little bit more petally. Let me do that again up here.
And because it's the same colour as the nail, it doesn't look like you've added in the second layer of dots. So it looks like you painted on a load of little U-shapes, which you didn't. So I'm going to chuck him in and cure him. I'm going to let him cure and then we're going to put little orange dots on again. While I'm waiting for that, I am going to paint a nail white and we are going to do a sugar skull with a flowery kind of pattern. I can't get any of the bottles open this morning. So I am going to paint this guy white. And I'm going to chuck him in the lamp and cure him. Now with this guy I'm going to come back in again with my small dotting tool. And I'm going to pop a little orange dot in the centre of each of my flowers. Aren't they cute? So let's chuck him in there and cure him. And I'm going to pop a second layer of white onto this nail. And I'm going to cure him. Now this one's a little bit more complicated to get right, but it looks awesome. Um, so I am going to need some black as well, and I'm going to need a few more colours. So I'm just going to dispense a blob of black onto my little palette. I'll do a little blob of some purple. And we'll do some green. Okay. Cool. And then this is him, nice and cured. Okay, let's check him that way. Okay, so for our sugar skull. I'm going to take a medium sized dotting tool again and I'm going to place my dots in that same kind of triangular method but I'm only going to apply two of them and then I'm going to cure it so that when I put a different colour beside the previous dot they don't blend together and smudge. Um, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of pink and I'm going to do it over here to one side. Okay, I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to get a little bead of purple and as if I'm doing my triangle, I'm going to pop that here and I'm going to cure them for a couple of seconds. Now once you do this a couple of times, you can do the two eyes at the same time, um, but I'm just going to do it one by one for now so you can see where I'm going with this because otherwise it's going to look like there's just dots everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to take a little dot here of the green and I'm going to place it here. I'm going to clean my dot until and then I'll take the orange and I'm going to place it down here. And I'm going to clear them again for a couple of seconds. Put this over here so it's easy for me to clean. And I'll take a little blob of the maroon then as well and pop it here. I'll chuck it in the lamp for a couple of seconds to cure. Now I'm going to use a different kind of pattern over the other side to create the other eye. So I want to try and have it in line with this one. But like that, if it's not perfectly in line, don't panic, it's totally fine. So this time I'm going to start off with my green one at the top. 
and I'm gonna pop them here. And we'll go for orange down in the bottom corner. Here them. Then I'll take my maroon over here, pop my dot on, and we'll pop the pink down here, chuck them in the lamp, and we'll go for a purple then for this piece here. So right there at the minute, I have the beginning of two eyes. And I'm gonna chuck him in there and cure him. Okay, right, that's enough of that. Now, so what I'm gonna do, oh, I need a blob of white as well. Where's my white? White. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blob of black and I'm going to put it in the center of each of the eyes. Right in the middle. And I'm going to cure that. Now I'm going to be putting more polish on top of that black in a second, so I want that to be totally cured. So I want him to be in there for the 30 seconds. So while I'm just going to be popping that in and out of the lamp for a few seconds, I'm going to move down and do his nose. So, you know the way when we're doing a flower, we're doing a triangle, but they're all kind of separated? When we're doing his nose, we're still doing a triangle, but the triangle has to be stuck together. So I'm going to pop a dot a little bit down. And then I'm going to take another little black dot and put it to one side, but touch the previous one. And the same thing over this side. So it's basically your Mickey Mouse, but a little bit more stuck together. And I'm going to chuck him in there for a few seconds to cure him. Now I'm going to move on and do his mouth. Um, so what I need is a much larger dotting tool. Him out of there. And what I'm going to do is pick up a nice big bead of black and in a straight line, I tend to always do this in a straight line rather than a smiley line because if you imagine this is going to be his teeth and our faces smile but our teeth are all in a straight line. And I'm just going to do a few dots across the nail. Okay. And I'm going to chuck him in the lamp again for a few seconds and let that cure. And again, I'm going to give that actually the full 30 seconds because I'm going to be putting more polish on top of the black dots that we've done now. Um, I love the sugar skull one. It's probably one of my favourites of all of the different things you can do with like flowers and dotting tools and that. Okay. Now I'm going to take a much smaller dotting tool than I used earlier on and a smaller one again for the eyes because I did use a fairly small one for the black dots of the eyes. But let's make him look creepy. So if I take a little teeny tiny dotting tool and inside the black dots that I put for the eyes, we're going to do a smaller dot so that his eyes stand out. And I'm going to cure that just for a couple of seconds so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to take my medium sized dotting tool, rather well, my slightly smaller than medium sized dotting tool. This was the one we were using for the flowers. And this one here is a little bit smaller. And I'm going to pick up my little white beads and I'm going to drop them inside its mouth. there we have our sugar skull. 
So I would literally cure him for 30 seconds, top coat him, and he's done. So I'm going to chuck him in there now and cure him. Okay. So we're going to move on then to kind of like a, a lavendery design. Um, so I'm going to do this on a white background as well because I think it will stand out really nicely on a white background. Or actually, I might use the pink. I'll use the really pale pink because this is quite nice. And not a whole lot of clients get white nails, so let's do it on the pink. So I'll chuck him in there and cure him. Now I am going to wipe clean my palette while I'm waiting for that to cure because I need a bunch of different colours for this. Okay, so I'm going to need some greens and purples for this next one. So... Where are my greens? There's a green. I'll move this in here so you can see what I'm doing. One green and the purples. Got the lavender there. I'm just going to paint this again really quick. Chuck him in the room. And I need my other. Where did I put my other lavender? Oh, there we go. Or my other purple, I should say. It's not lavender. And I want my other green as well that I was using earlier on. Abandoned ship, here he is. Okay. Perfect. So, I have my little stick. And I've also got one of my little paintbrushes. Now, this little paintbrush, I chopped most of the hairs out of to make it really, really fine. Um, and I also bought it in the art and hobby shop about four years ago for about three quid. Um, so nail art brushes are only really expensive if you let them be really expensive. Um, but this guy, I find is perfect. I use him like literally nobody else is allowed anywhere near this nail art brush. <laughs> I've had this brush for years and it does everything I need it to do. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my light green. I'll leave him over here and just see if it'll stay in focus with that in the screen. And I'm going to take my light green and I'm going to drag it up the nail. And if you start it thicker at the base, so that it gets thinner as it goes up, it looks a little bit more leaf-like. And I'm going to have another one here, but smaller. And we'll have another long piece here. So do you see the way I'm just doing little lines up the nail? Okay, and I'm going to chuck him in the light and cure him. So we are doing a lavender design now and it's going to look super cute. Um, and you're going to be using your dotting tools again now in a second for this. Yeah, that's enough. Now I'm going to take my slightly darker one then. And just to add a little bit of kind of texture to it. 
I'm just going to run. Just drag in little bits of the darker one down across the nail. See the way I'm not re dipping, I'm literally just picking it up from the first one and dragging it down. Just kind of going over with a second colour, not all the way up, just part of the way up. Just gives it a little bit more of a uh, real life look. And then I'm going to clear him. Um, and then the second we are going to do the little petals for your lavender. Um, so I'm going to use a fairly small dotting tool and I'm going to use the light lavender colour. And you're going to go from about halfway up. Um, so I'm going to put random little dots back and forward on the nail. Do you see the way I'm not putting them right beside each other? I'm kind of putting them at a zigzag up the stalk. Do you see that? I'm kind of zigzagging it. I'm going to do the same on this one. Zigzagging all the way up the stalk. And I'll do the same down here. And zigzags all the way up. And I'm going to cure them for a couple of seconds just so they don't move too much on me. I want them to move a little bit so they blend slightly so they're not little balls. And I don't want them to move too much. See the way they're blending nicely? There at the minute across the nail. So little dots all the way up. And finally on this one. And also see the way I'm not going right down to the base of the nail. Lavender petals don't go right the way down the stalk. So I've left a little gap down here at the base where you can still see the lovely green. And I'm going to chuck them in there and cure them because I'm now in a second going to be putting more purple on top of that purple to make it look a little bit more lifelike. Um, but I'm also going to use the super tiny end of a dotting tool I'm actually going to use this one because I really want only a tiny little bit of the darker purple going on. So see the way this guy is almost like a point? Well he is kind of a point. Um, rather than having a round dot at the end of him. Okay. So I'm going to take the darker purple then that I have and I'm going to pop it close to the stalk but just inside the lighter purple dot. all the way up. So touching off the stalk but also touching off the purple dot that we've already applied. So it's inside the, the original dot. And you just love when you get fluff on your nail. It's gone now. Okay. I'm just gonna put my finger to you. Doesn't that make all the difference when you add on the slightly darker purple as well? And that is our super quick and easy lavender design. 
Now I'm going to show you a rose design as well. That looks really cute. So let's see. I'll do him in that pink on this pink, I think. Actually. Paint up this color pop with some lilac. Let's chuck him in one. And then we would just be top coating him and curing him. And he is done. So once that one now in a second is cured, we're gonna do a really cute, easy rose design. Um, which kind of looks like, almost like the Cat kids in -y kind of rose design. So you can, if you want to, do some dots around it or do some stripes. Let's paint them down first of all. Should do a little lamp. We'll do some... What we do? Dots or strike? We'll do some dots around them. So, we'll do the dots in white because it's a pale pink actually. And then we'll do the actual rose in a deeper pink. And we'll use purple as well for the rose. Oh, that may have been way too much gel polish for my dot for that, but that's fine, don't worry. Plenty, plenty in the bottles. Okay. Right, so we'll chuck him in there and cure him. So we're going to do a bunch of dots. And then we are going to do our rose. I'm still trying to decide. I think we'll do the dots in the purple and we'll do the rose in the two pinks because I think that will look best. Yeah, I think that will look cute. I always have to think these things through when I'm sitting the everyone thinking away at the same time. Okay, right, let's take him out of there. So I'm going to take my purple and I'm going to use a small enough dot and tool and I'm just going to pop some dots. I'm not going to do many because I don't want to take away from the finished result. So I'm just doing small ones. Spread out down the nail. I'm going to cure them. Now for the next bit you can either use a dot and tool to make your circle or you can use a brush. I like to use a brush because I don't like to make my circle absolutely perfect because if you look at a flower, a flower is never a perfect circle. Um, so I am going to use a brush for this next bit but do feel free to use a dot and tool if you would prefer. Let's pop a little pad over here and I hate waiting for lamps. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my uh, darker pink. So I'm going to be using this pink, these two here, the dark one and the light one. I'm going to start off with my dark one. I'm going to pick up a blob of it. And I'm going to paint a circle ish looking blob. onto the nail. Like I said, I don't like it to be perfect, so I'm going to do some little blobs here and there. If you can see colours underneath, don't worry, because you're going to be putting more pink on now in a second. And I'm going to do another one here. Oh, 
I'm just going to paint him in. And we can do another one down here if you wanted to. You can do these anywhere on the nail. And don't worry about having a steady hand. If you have a shaky hand, just go with the shake. The shake give you wobbles. Sometimes having a shaky hand when you're doing stuff like this works really well. So I have like three pink blobs on the nail there at the minute. I'm going to chuck them in the lamp and cure them and I'm just going to clean my brush. Now if you wanted you could go over them again with some more pink to make the pink stand out a bit more so I think we'll do that and then we'll move on to the lighter pink. Just to go over it again to make the colour a bit stronger so that it stands out a little bit more. That's also totally covering up the bit of purple underneath. But like that I could have stopped with one and just when I put my next layer um, of my other pink on that would have covered up the purple anyway from underneath. Could always do your dots afterwards but then it's more difficult to get your placement of them even across the nail and i'm going to chuck in and cure i'm going to need my greens now in a few minutes as well so hopefully my uh, lovely giant blob of pink that i have meddling with my other colors will leave my green alone for a few minutes Um, okay, so I'm going to pick up a slightly lighter blob of pink and all I'm going to do is pop little swirls. This is a super simple design. So I am just popping a little C shape, like I'm drawing the letter C, drawing a little C shape. And then along here I'll draw a big C shape. So I'm literally drawing the letter C backwards, letter C, backwards letter C, and an upside down letter C. Just to create that kind of rosy look. Now I'm just going to cure that for a couple of seconds so I can pop my green on now. And all I'm going to do with my green is draw a little leaf so kind of like a squashed egg when you draw on your leaves like you're drawing an egg but a really really narrow one I'm going to do one down here as well Squashed egg for your leaves. And you're going to stick him in the lamp, cure him, and top coat him. Right. He is in there. Okay. So. I've got one more then that we're going to go through this morning um, to give you kind of like a Japanese styly look, I suppose. <laughs> Try and get this bottle open. There we go. So I'm going to paint the nail green first of all. And then we're going to use these two pinks again and a brown. So I made this green. This was one of the, the colours that was super see-through. So I just mixed in a heap of white and made this green. And this green is amazing. So I'm going to chuck it in there and turn on my lamp. And I'm going to squeeze out, well, pour out some brown. If I can get the bottle open. Jesus, my hand. 
pants this morning and bottles are not warm. Gel polish here. And I'll stick him in a cure. Right. So this is our outer guy, all cured and ready to be top coated. And so the first thing then to do for your little Japanesey one is we have to draw like the branches of a tree. So they are just going to be some straight, slightly wobbly lines. So again, you don't need a steady hand because your lines need to be wobbly. So I'm going to use my super thin brush again, which is like my best friend. And I'm going to pick up a little blob of my brown gel polish. And I'm going to work it across the nail. Do you see the way that's getting thinner as it goes? So what I'm doing is I'm pressing down at the start and then I'm lifting my brush further and further away from the nail as I go across. And so putting on loads of pressure with my brush. Am I even doing that inside the screen? Yeah. And so loads of pressure on my brush and then lifting away from the nail as I want it to get thinner and lighter. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And then thinner. And lighter. Okay, and I'm going to chuck that in the lamp and cure it. And then we are back to our medium sized dotting tool again. So you can see a lot of these flowers are done with dotting tools and that, so they are super easy things for you guys to do and things that you shouldn't need to buy any more tools to do, apart from if you don't have a brush, but like that, you don't need a brush for all of these designs. So far, you've only needed your brush for the lavender, the petals, um, and for your little pink squiggly bits inside your rose and then for your tree branches. So we are doing dots again, but what we're doing this time is tree dots and we want the tree dots to touch off each other. So got a little bit of product on my tool and I'm doing a little triangle of dots. So I've got one, two, three, and I want them touching each other. And ideally, at some point, touching the tree. They don't have to be like completely in contact with the tree, but it is better if they are touching the tree a little bit at least. Move down here. One, two, three dots. And you want the three of them touching each other. These are like, um, the Japanese Sakura blossom trees, which are cherry blossom trees. They are called Sakura, uh, Sakura trees in Japan, and Sakura means cherry blossom. Okay. 
They're also the cutest trees on the planet, in my opinion. I love them. And once I've done that, I'm going to chuck him in the lamp and cure him. And then I'm going to use a slightly smaller side again. And I'm going to use my darker pink. And I'm going to pop like a little darker pink blob in the middle of each of those little flowers. So I'm going to give him a couple of seconds to cure. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my slightly darker blob. I'm going to put it in the centre of each of my little blossoms. Not being worried that they're all the same size, so you can see I'm like not re-dipping each time. And that is my Sakura blossom tree. I'm going to chuck him in there and cure him and away he goes. So what we covered then this week was our super simple flower. Our uh, also super simple flower that's a little bit more complicated with also dotting tools. Our sugar skull made out of flowers, also with a dotting tool. <laughs> Our lavender, which I really like. Lavender is so cute. Our roses. And my little sakura blossom trees. That was on my nail right now, wouldn't it be so cute? Isn't it lovely? Now you don't have to do any of those on those particular colour backgrounds. You can do them on whatever background that you want. Um, I really like these three. I always like the things that are slightly more complicated. But I think all of you guys will be more than able to do all of them. Um, so your challenge then for this week is to get at least 10 colour pops done with different flowery designs. Okay, so you can work off the bases of these ones, but maybe have like, you could have one nail with like one flower on it in a corner. What I used to do a lot was people would get their nails done on, on like their ring finger in each hand. They would get one flower just done down here near the cuticle line. Um, and it would just be like one of these super simple ones. Um, you could have a nail completely covered in roses. You could have one line of your Japanese style rose. You could have a nail with just two little stalks of your lavender. Um, so 10 color pops with different flower designs on them to show off to your clients. Um, and thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.